Hi everybody, today I'm working on a 2003 Mini Cooper S, John Cooper Works. This car had a bit of an unusual situation where at about 3000 RPM it wouldn't make power. It would run okay and then when it gets to about 3000 RPM it would, the power would cut out as if you're lifting up on the throttle. It also had a couple of diagnostic codes pointing to the throttle body and I believe the other's the map sensor. Here's the codes right here on the screen. My first suspicion was obviously throttle body or the airflow sensor, but since the car ran normally under other conditions, I kind of got suspicious that maybe it's something else. Fortunately, I have another Mini that I can compare parts on, so that's what I did. It was relatively easy to take off the throttle body and the manifold air pressure sensors and swap them over to the other car, but the problem was still there. So I started poking around thinking it could be a vacuum leak or something else and uh, actually I was playing around with the bypass valve as well and it turns out that that's what the problem was. Now there's no code for the bypass valve itself. The only way to diagnose it is other symptoms. So on the supercharger horn here, on the intercooler horn on the cold side, on the bottom is the bypass valve right here. And what this does is when the car is not under boost, under low power required situations, this valve is open. So what that does is it allows the air to go directly into the intake manifold without being boosted for better fuel economy. So here's the valve here. This is a new one. It's got a kind of a vacuum circuit here. It's, it's sort of funny. It plugs right into itself. But basically, when the car is idling, it develops a vacuum which causes the valve to pull open and that allows the air to go straight into the intake. So this is, this is kind of the way the path works. We've got the air, air filter here, then it goes through the intake hose here, then it goes into the throttle body which is right here, and the throttle body opens and closes based on the throttle pedal position sensor inside the car. It's a drive-by-wire system, of course. After the air goes through the throttle body, it goes into this black plastic hose thingy, and uh, the other end is connected directly into the supercharger, which is under the intake manifold here. The air leaves the supercharger after being boosted, comes in through the hot side supercharger intercooler horn here, goes through the intercooler, then it goes through the cold side, and then into the intake plenum runners and straight into the engine. So the valve sits right here. This is the bad valve attached to the bottom side of the cold side intercooler horn. And uh, when it's open, instead of all the air running through the supercharger, it just goes straight up and straight into the intake to give you a little bit better fuel economy at lower RPMs. And what I did is uh, I compared it to my car. When the valve is on the bottom here, I just kind of reached in and pushed on this uh, diaphragm here. And what I found is uh, the one on this car here, the diaphragm had almost no resistance. So that got me kind of uh, thinking. You can barely see the bypass valve when the car is all put together, but the good thing is you can reach your hand in there actually and feel the actuator, feel the diaphragm pressure. So what I did for that blue, blue Mini over there is put my hand in here, just basically pushed on it with my finger and felt the pressure. I basically pushed on it like this and I compared the pressure between my car and that blue Mini over there and I found that the resistance was much higher on my own car. So I went back over to this Mini and took it all apart. Sorry I didn't have time to record the disassembly process because I'm in a bit of a hurry to get this car back running, but I'll, I'll explain what I did here. So it's pretty easy to get this out of here. Uh, basically the first thing you want to do is uh, disconnect this hose right here. You stick a screwdriver under here and pop these clamps. There's another one on the bottom. I like to replace the bottom clamp with a worm style clamp it makes it a lot easier to get it back on. So I'd recommend to pick up uh, some of these clamps and replace the stock ones. Then you're gonna wanna pull this uh, cool air intake. You basically pull it out and then twist it. You think you wanna twist it this way, but actually you, you need to twist it this way to get it out. That's the way it comes out more easily. Once you do that, the throttle body is here. It's held in with four 10 millimeter bolts. It's easy to get in there with a, a socket and a long extension. There's one vacuum line attached right here. You just kind of twist and pull. Oh, and uh, here's the cable here. You need to unplug that as well, of course. And when you put the car back together, 
this is easy to forget, so be sure to plug that back in when you reinstall. So once you do that, you're left with this right here. You want to get a, a, an 11 millimeter socket with an extension on it and run these three bolts off, one there, there, and there. And probably the hardest part is there's a hose clamp on the bottom here. You're going to need to get in a, a screwdriver or a pick and pop this clip here to get this hose clamp to come off. And again, I recommend using a worm style clamp when you put everything back together. Once you do all that, you're going to kind of push down gently on this uh, black tube here. It's held in by one bolt on the back end of the supercharger. I'll put a picture here of what it looks like because you can't see here. And at the same time, you're going to want to pull backwards on this horn here to make it clear these three bolts, these three studs, and then kind of wiggle and pull up. Once you do that, you can see the bypass valve right here. And that's held in with three 10 millimeter bolts. And you know, people talk about using a Detroit tuned bypass valve. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's necessary these days to use that. The early 2003 and earlier cars had a weak, uh, weak spring actually, which caused a bit of a yo-yo effect to happen. But the later models, there's been a redesign and the spring is a little bit stiffer. Oh, I forgot to show you actually what happened. So anyway, I took off the old bypass valve, this, this part right here. And I took apart the diaphragm here. This is what it looks like on the inside. There's a spring that goes right here. So I took this apart with some clips. I basically cracked open these clips. And I discovered that the spring is broken in half. So it was unable to give the correct amount of pressure. And then when the car came off a vacuum, this would open all by itself. So what that means is instead of the air going through the supercharger and building power, it was leaking through the open bypass valve here. And uh, we had a lot loss of power and the computer was confused what was going on so it threw codes. So the moral of the story is before you go and buy an expensive $220 or so throttle body, check your bypass valve. If you're getting weird codes, there's a good chance that this is what it is. And these clamps are a lot of fun. Basically, you need, a, you need a pair of pliers that have kind of a sharp, sharp nose. As long as you're squeezing straight, it should just clip right on. There we go. All right, let's try to get this on. And I'm going to see if I can reconnect the, the stock hose clamp. I may or may not be able to. It's pretty tight. If not, I'll just switch to a worm clamp. You just have to kind of wiggle it in there. And it slides on it slides on pretty easily actually now we'll see what we can do about this hose clamp I'll kind of use a pick to rotate it around just the right amount so I can get my pliers on it almost got it let's switch to uh, angle nose pliers and see if that works what do you know I got it so it is possible. All right, so that's the hard part. Now we'll just put the uh, 11 mil bolts back on. It's kind of weird. There's, I think there's no other 11 millimeter bolts on the whole car. This one on the back side right here is an easy one to drop. So what I do normally is I'll feed it through inside the socket from the back side. Because if you drop it, you're never going to see it again. Then we put my towel back over here so I don't, so nothing falls into the intake and you can reuse the gasket that goes to the intake plenum I've never had to replace one All right, next is throttle body just check and make sure the seal looks good first and you just kind of wiggle it back in place now we'll put this guy back in place These clamps are the same as the ones on the bypass valve. As you can see, there's basically no room to clamp it on when it's in place here. There's no room for your pliers. So the other method is to clamp it on first. The other method is to clamp the hose on first to the throttle body using the stock hose clamp and then attach it. 
there's enough room to get your 10 millimeter socket in through there, even if you do that. And put the intercooler back in next. What I like to do is just put it in here, push it in, and then go to the other side and kind of push all the way as far as I can and kind of park it right about here. Then I'll grab a screwdriver with a round shank and just very carefully kind of pull like that. And you want to be careful, don't tear these, they're like 50 bucks each. Before putting the boot bracket on, I'm going to put the intercooler brackets back in place and make sure that these holes line up so that the intercooler cover bolts don't bind up against anything. You know, when I take them apart, I don't take them off completely. I just kind of swing them out of the way. Less stuff to worry about. Once I'm happy with the location, I'll put the bra top brackets on. And these are, these are Torx T30. You just do one side a little bit at a time and then tighten them up. And you want to be careful to avoid these things turning upside down over the engine bay. The bolts will fall out and you never see them again. And we'll put the intercooler cover back on and that should be it. And then we'll put the snorkel hose back in. And the way I do this is I kind of start this way, sort of force it in, rotate it down, or rotate it around this way. So you clear the wires and the little, uh, little weird breather thing on the bottom here. Takes a, just a bit of forcing, but it'll snap right in like just like that. And then after I put that in, I'll put this guy in last. And on the front here, it's easiest to put the top clips in first, and then just kind of pull forward, and the bottom clips will clip in as well. Then you want to do the same clip with the pliers for the hose clamp. And you're all done and ready to take it for a drive. Then the last thing we'll do is clear any codes that are still in the car. And I'll show you where you can, I'll put a link in the description where you can buy this tool on Amazon, as well as any other maybe special tools that I've used for this job. Start the car up. Check engine light goes off, so we're good. Let's go take a drive. Yep, it's the feels like the dead spot's gone, so that's a successful repair. So be sure to check the bypass valve if your car is acting funny. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, share with your friends, click like if you like this video, and ask questions or discuss in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.